All right. Uh, I think for those of you who know me, know that I don't want to keep the microphone too close to my mouth because I'm too loud in general, so it tends to overdrive the microphone. Uh, but thanks for coming. I think uh, I wanted to, probably you have noticed actually quite a bit, um, this conference has become more about deep learning than, than GPUs in itself. Uh, so it has evolved a whole lot. Um, and I think our, our focus in open power community is also to leverage that energy and that mind share out there and really put together solutions that are very compelling uh, from the point of view of big data. So one question, I think a good question to keep in mind is, um, why, is open, uh, why is deep learning where it is today? If neural networks were around for a long time. I remember actually when I was doing my PhD a long time back, um, we had my colleagues doing their thesis on neural networks as well. So what, what actually came together that, that gave rise to this phenomenon that we are seeing now? And I think you can look at it and say there were two things that happened, two major things that happened. Um, significantly, I think the algorithms, the fundamental algorithms um, are similar. Uh, I wouldn't say exactly the same, but similar. So gradient descent, everybody knows it. I think uh, probably one could argue that it's one of the simple algorithms out there. There are a lot more complex algorithms, but gra gradient descent is one of the simple algorithms out there. Um, two things came together to give rise to this phenomenon, and I call data, and the second one is compute, actually. So the compute grew to a point where it can manage large amount of data um, thereby giving us insights that we didn't have before. So previously, either we didn't have very large amount of data, so we couldn't derive the insights, and we didn't have the compute to match it as well. So those are two things I could argue which are underpinnings of this phenomenon of deep learning that we are seeing today. Um, so basically, I think I'm gonna take you through uh, what we've been focused on, um, kind of things that you will see uh, to start come um, from the point of releases on open power as well, uh, because well, many people may be wondering, a lot of these deep learning packages and machine learning packages that are out there, they run on obviously the standard sort of platform on Intel, uh, what's going on with power. So I'll take you through what, what we've been working on and what our uh, releases will be very soon, and you will see more actually press releases about it as we go forward. Okay, so I think from the point of view of the backbone of, uh, of open power uh, system, this is the power um, processor itself, um, which is an enhanced microarchitecture, um, a large amount of execution bandwidth, SMT8, transactional memory, uh, vector scalar units, so SIMD, uh, and high performance integer and floating point vector processor. It's really optimized for data rich applications. This, this was really a processor that was built for big data, actually. Very high bandwidth and big data. So overall, um, the combined I.O. bandwidth that you see is around 7.6 terabits a second, which is massive amount of I.O. bandwidth. Um, so it's really big bandwidth that is able to match uh, the big data requirements. Uh, putting it all together with the memory links on and off uh, node SMP links, as well as PCIe, uh, as I said, it runs at around 7.6 terabits uh, of chip I.O. bandwidth. So from the point of view of the, the, the processor itself, it's a general purpose CPU design. Uh, obviously, in any general purpose processor, there are many competing requirements. Um, and sort of, you're trying to make one size fits all, and as all of us know, one size doesn't fit all, but that's, since it's a general purpose processor, that's what we are uh, basically building. Uh, there is a branch control flow dominated code, uh, codes with unpredictable data access patterns, uh, operating system code, multiple separate applications that could be running, multiple VMs concurrently running, uh, which results in relatively low efficiency for any one particular metric, I could argue. Um, so flops per area or integer ops per area and so on. So what we really are trying to do is, we basically are, let me just sort of forward this a little bit, so I think our, our vision was in open power to really adapt openness and provide interfaces whereby, whether it is CAPI or whether it is NVLink, whereby we can adapt um, accelerators. So if you got 
Compute intensive jobs, we can offload that to, for example, a GPU. If you got actually certain other applications, whether transactions or other ones, which can utilize FPGAs, we can offload, offload that through CAPI to an FPGA as well. So for GPU acceleration, for example, um, coming up with the NVLink, we support up to 18 GPUs or more. Uh, we have tested this with up to 24 devices, so 12 K80s. Um, we exploit the IBM design for big data. Uh, it's, I think the key is that we are able to address, a, a, there's a very large addressable space which enables rich accelerator configurations, which I think the, some of the other designs are not able to do. So our address space is very, very large, thereby we are able to actually incorporate large amount of GPUs in the chassis. Uh, it's one terabyte of address space per PCI host interface, which is larger than anybody available out there. Um, standard li uh, little Indian Linux and NVIDIA drivers are available, and it supports CUDA 7.5. Uh, it's available now. I think we are, there are systems that you'll see, see around that are coming up. So from the point of view of power um, and, uh, and machine and deep learning software stack, so I think it, it's important to keep in mind that it's great to build hardware, but what makes or breaks the, the, the product is really the software stack. And what we really are doing is that there are several frameworks we are supporting. So we are not in obviously the business of selecting what frameworks you run. I think what you run is, is really your job. You decide what you run for your deep learning or your machine learning applications. Uh, we are in business of supporting all of these frameworks, the major ones, so CAFE from Berkeley, which is very suitable for, machine, uh, for uh, vision applications. Um, Torch, which is a, a, um, a Facebook uh, open source software available, which actually runs Lua and, uh, uh, through JIT process, and is very flexible, uh, very popular for text and, and speech now, openly, uh, increasingly speech now. Uh, Theano, which is uh, more sort of, more popular from the point of view of research usage, actually, I've seen, and also speech applications. Um, TensorFlow, which uh, there were a couple of talks here in the in the GTC on TensorFlow as well, which is from Google, uh, that will be supported. CNTK from Microsoft uh, will be supported as well, and DL4J, uh, which actually runs Spark-based distribution, will be supported as well. So you will see that it's a very wide amount of support for the software stack that's coming up, um, working on power, and for these you will start seeing very compelling numbers from performance point of view. Uh, with large amount of GPUs available to you. Um, in terms of the library layer, so obviously all of this runs underneath a library layer. Um, there's obviously Kublas and, uh, and Inpack available to you. Uh, CUDNN is supported, and we are also working with Nirvana, uh, Ovis, which is actually a, a FPGA-based vendor for uh, doing uh, training and inferencing, working with Xilinx, and the Xilinx blocks will be supported as well. On the, on the hardware stack through software libraries. Uh, internally at IBM, we are also working at what, is, what we call as DLSL, which is a deep learning system level library that will be able to exploit NVLink as we go along for several of these applications. So as we go through our, our evolution of uh, NVLink based systems come along, you will also start seeing a software library that will be able to utilize the NVLink based systems for several of your applications and will become part and parcel of our lower level libraries which we will release in, in uh, open source as well. So from the point of view of power GPU acceleration, um, there's a CUDA programming environment uh, supported under Little Indian Linux. Uh, GPU obviously as a compute accelerator, offload dominated compute intensive application portion to the GPU, and advances in GPU performance and programming, uh, universal virtual addressing, and unified memory will be coming on board as well. Um, ongoing collaboration to, to co-optimize systems. So we actually are, within research, for example, we are working on systems uh, to, to, uh, to experiment with chassis that have very high GPU count uh, with, uh, with very high bandwidth available between the, the power processor and the, C and the GPUs that are uh, deployed with PCIe um, in, in particular and running with NVLink as well. So. So really, I think from a programming point of view, um, we will be supporting a very heterogeneous environment, and several of the companies that you see out there are working towards that as well. Obviously, there's the power processor itself. Uh, you can actually, uh, you could probably write it in C++, Java, 
Um, then obviously from a FPGA point of view, you may like to write it in OpenCL, System C or VHDL. Obviously several of these, I think the, at least in my mind, the, the make or break for several of these things will be how easy it is to use a, a, um, a particular library. And I think I've, I've discussions with the Xilinx team, for example. And if, as a software developer, if anyone told me that I have to, so if I'm in a meeting and someone told me RTL, I push back because I got nothing to do with RTL unless somebody can make it highly consumable from a software point of view. And I think that's where NVIDIA has done a great job making sure that the, that the intricacies of hardware are actually hidden from you by enabling things like Kublas and CUDNN, which really were underpinnings of of this sort of tsunami that is taking us through for the deep learning space. And I think from the FPGA point of view, we need to do something very similar as well. And we are working with Xilinx and Ovis for that. Um, and I think from the point of view of obviously the, the NVIDIA part, programming environment, as well as programming based on uh, some of the key linear algebra constructs which are supported in Kublas and CUDNN. So I think from a portability and optimization in heterogeneous environment point of view, um, obviously there's GPU enablement, uh, FPGA interfaces and configuration, and potentially other accelerators which will be coming on board as well, which can be attached through either the NVLink or specifically PCIe, obviously. You can connect it through PCIe. Um, there's a library layer I talked about earlier on, and there's a uh, sort of couple of libraries we are working on as well to take advantage of NVLink in particular. Um, and I think then right on top of that are the applications which you could write it in actually the, the uh, Watson Development Cloud or other actually um, applications that you are writing yourself in different application environment. And I think right in, in the middle of this, I'm showing this cognitive middleware um, that we are calling, which basically is the layer that, that hooks up the lower level libraries to the application development. So in terms of what is supported today, um, uh, which will be uh, coming sort of in, in a release very soon, um, the Deep Learning Framework Cafe has already been ported, um, included in first release of Power uh, MLDL distribution, which will be coming very soon. Um, Torch, which has also been ported and will also be included in the first release. Theano and Digits 3 uh, interface. So Digits 3 is the NVIDIA box. Uh, which is, and an interface as well, by the way, uh, which is actually uh, supporting sort of a graphical interface which is able to support various interfaces that will be also supported on power, um, uh, in the open power uh, ecosystem. And TensorFlow, uh, DL4J, and CNTK will be coming very soon. They've been ported, but I think they will be supported in the upcoming releases as we go on. So I think that's what I wanted to talk about. I'll be happy to take questions from you, but I think we are going to have some pretty exciting time with a lot of these packages coming on board, which are highly optimized on the open power, open power ecosystem and the libraries that we are building with respect to uh, the NVLink optimization and so on. So thank you.